the Spaniard who was one of the great climbers on the bike, he had gone more than a minute up on you and it seemed that you were dead and that your, your hopes of the tour were dead. When it's about eight and a half, 18 and a half kilometers of mm -hmm. a climb to La Plan in the Alps, isn't it? But what happened was I, I knew that there was no point in reacting straight away because we were only two or three kilometers into the hill and Delgado knew I was tired. And you couldn't have sustained yeah, it only. I could never have sustained it and he would have attacked me once, twice, three, four times until I was gone. So when how I had long gone, did you wait? Well, what I did was, I knew there was no point in going straight away because I was too tired. So I said, well, I'll see what he, can, what he has. So I let him go and I, I, I made my own tempo behind him and just kept riding. And he got one minute straight away, like that. I said, Jenny, at this rate, he's taking one minute and five kilometers. There's still 15 to go. That's three minutes up and it's, for me, it's finished. So I said, well, we, we can't go yet because I, because I hadn't recovered. So I just let it go and go and go. And he got 120, 125. Then it started getting slower back to 120, 125, 120, 125, I said, ah, maybe he's shot his balls. He's feeling it a bit now. So I, can't, I said, no, I said, no, I can, I can, I can keep him there for a few kilometers and I'll try and recover myself. And I know myself that with five to go, five, isn't, five kilometers is a long way, but when you know the finish in five kilometers and the Tour de France at the end of it, you know, maybe never, never know what we can do. So I, I let it be anyway, and then I just held him at 120, 125. And then uh, when I saw the, 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 the board, uh, five kilometers to go, I just, I just ate the road. And I, I, even to this day now... Um, you just ate the road? Yeah. The, 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 the courage, not so much the courage I had, but the, the power I had and the, the, also the courage because I was actually on my knees. And the, the strength that I found, the hidden strength that I found, the, the hidden courage that I found in myself to pull out this five kilometers pursuit that I made in the final. I didn't, I didn't see anybody on the side of the road. I didn't know where Delgado was. I knew he was in front, and that's all. And with about even five kilometers to go, like I, I was normally using a very, very small ring, small, small gear, and I was like going from second into overdrive. I had 14 gears that day in my bike, and I was right down on my lowest gear, going up it. And I went like from from second up into, for example, twelfth gear. Like it was like going in a car from second, and going on a climb, going from second to overdrive. Like the, the difference was just kind of, I just stuck on the pedals like that and I gave a kick and he went around again. But once I got it going though, I, I, the last 500 metres, I just ate the road and all of a sudden I see Delgado in front of me. And uh, for me it was a, uh, like it was better that I didn't see Delgado on the hill because if I saw Delgado, I might have been happy to say, well, he's only got 100 metres, he's only got yes. 200 metres. Whereas with all the crowds and the people, the cars and everything else, I didn't see him. I knew he was up there somewhere, but I didn't know actually where he was. And of course, I was delighted when I came around the last corner. Rhodes was not far behind as from somewhere he found fresh power. And as Delgado crosses the line, his quest for minutes had become seconds, for the brilliant Irishman was only just behind him. This was a sign of a true champion and a fight back the tour had rarely seen. I crossed the line, I made an awful effort. And I, I crossed the line, and uh, nobody, my, my feet were still t strapped into the, the pedals and nobody could, uh, like it was going into a wall of journalists and nobody even wanted to hold me, I, I had no force, nothing, nothing at all. I wanted Patrick got to me then and Patrick helped me off my bike and I started pushing the journalists away because I, I couldn't breathe, uh, I couldn't get off my bike, I couldn't stand, I uh, couldn't do anything. Luckily, the first man to reach him was his personal mechanic and stalwart ally, Patrick Valka. Patrick carried me off my bike and I just couldn't, I was like a dead weight, I, just, I couldn't hold my arms, I couldn't do anything. And I was lying down my legs on the road. You left the everything out there on the hill. Everything on the road, yeah, everything on the hill, yeah. And all the journalists were up over, the, the finish was a big uh, scaffolding up around me. And uh, all the journalists were up there looking down, getting photographs, and the thing was swaying like this, and creaking like, and I was on the lid and said, that's going to come down on top of me. I, I couldn't do anything about it, and I was there, and I was, I was half in a daze, then they gave me the oxygen and they started helping me to breathe better and I came around Then it didn't come around very good but I, I was able to... Then you said something slightly cheeky to the doctor, didn't you, when he said you're coming around now, Stephen? Um, yeah, when, it, when he put me into the ambulance to take me to the hospital, the television came along and said, Stephen, can we have a word with you? So they asked me, how do you feel now? And I said, well, um, I said, uh, I feel much better now but I don't think I'll be going dancing tonight. 
<laughs> the version I had was you said, I don't think I'm ready for a woman just yet. That's what I was wondering. That sounds better to me, Steve. Looks like Eddie the rapidity.